Can we get every ride photo in Walt Disney World in one day? That's 14 rides across four parks. Let's go. I'd really like to explain this video, but I think Mickey's coming down the street. It's a cavalcade. We have to wave at Mickey. It's the law. For today's challenge, we are headed to all four Walt Disney World parks to try and snag the on-ride photos at the 14 attractions that feature them. The on-ride photos are always some of my favorites to look at at the end of the day because you never know what your face is going to look like when you're on an attraction. Throughout the day today, we'll share some tips and tricks. Also want to give a quick thank you to Disney for hosting us for a little staycation to do a couple of challenge videos. And a quick note that just because we're being hosted doesn't mean that changes our opinions on anything. Also, they didn't give us any kind of bonus lightning lanes or free skip the line service or anything. Any access we're getting onto the attractions, we booked on Genie Plus on the My Disney Experience app like anybody else. So we'll give some tips on how to best use that as well. The first ride we have booked is Seven Dwarves Mine Train, which is a fancy ride. So for you resort guests, you can book it first thing in the morning at 7 a.m. For those who are not resort guests, you'll be able to book it as soon as the park is open. Thankfully, because we were staying at a resort, we were able to book this at 7 a.m. bright and early. This attraction has a 38-inch height requirement. It is like a mix of a dark ride and a coaster. A dark coaster? Dark coaster. Doaster? I think we're getting further away. Yeah. It's a dark coaster, and it follows the story of Snow White, specifically through the mines with the seven dwarves. As a fancy ride, Seven Doors Mine Train does require an additional purchase. It is an individual lightning lane attraction. Now, if you want to avoid that purchase, my suggestions are rope drop the attraction if you can. If you're a resort guest, try to use those early park entry hours or uh, expect a little bit of a longer wait. Yeah, it was 105 minutes just now. You can also ride it last thing at night and then the wait time may still be an hour or longer, but at least it's after the park closes. Alan? Yeah. Do you know what time it is? Zip, zip, zip. Splish, splash. That's right, friends. It's time for our last ride on Splash Mountain literally ever. I will remember you. Da, 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 da. Will you remember me? How do you feel about the fact that this is quite literally the last time you will ever ride Splash Mountain here at the Magic Kingdom? I know it's a beloved attraction, but I'm okay with it. I know one thing is that Walt loved to make progress and mm -hmm. move forward and try new things and open mm -hmm. new doors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I view this change as an extension of that. Now, granted, people who are Splash Mountain stands, you can come for me all you want, but I think that it's good that we keep trying new things and it's, it's time. How do you feel? It's really nice. Um, I hate water rides, so yeah. Splash Mountain, means nothing to me. <laughs> wow. The shade. I'm excited for Tiana to get an attraction, and I truly just hope that means beignets come to the Magic Kingdom. There it is. Yeah. The beignets. Yes. So, here we go. One last time. I'm ready. You don't even get that wet. You can't be too prepared. Also, this feels like one-sided magic. It's not my fault you didn't bring a rain jacket. Can't argue with that. Nobody likes wet pants. Okay? No one wants wet underpants. How should we pose for our final ride on Splash Mountain? Our final descent into the briar patch. One last time. A hearty salute. Mm pour one out for our fallen comrade. As it pours water on us. And hydraulic fluid. Mm. Tomorrow is quite literally the end of Splash Mountain 
here at the Magic Kingdom. They are closing it on both coasts and reimagining it as Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Now there's no set date for when it's closing in Disneyland. However, by the time you see this, it will be gone forever here at the Magic Kingdom. Splash Mountain was always incredibly popular, but even more so this weekend because of the closure. So we made sure to book this one early on Genie Plus. Genie Plus, we've done a bunch of videos about best tips, tricks, walk you through step-by-step -step how to use it. Check out the 2023 Genie Guide. But one thing I do want to point out with Genie Plus that's very applicable for this video is that starting sometime this spring, your on-ride photos are included with the cost of Genie Plus. So that's very exciting. Currently, if you want on-ride photos, you either need to have the Photo Pass feature on your uh, annual pass or purchase Memory Maker. Or you can purchase photos individually, but that's not very cost-effective. Not that it matters, but Splash Mountain has a 40 inch height requirement and it follows the Brer characters as they go on a zippity doo dah adventure. I'm really excited for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, even though I do not like water rides. I love that movie. I think the music's going to be amazing and I'm excited to see a, a revitalization of this attraction. Should we take a selfie right here? Should we take a hundred selfies on Splash Mountain for posterity? Enemy. A little bit more accurate. In reality, I do have a lot of nostalgia on Splash Mountain. As a child, I was foolish and thought water rides were fun. So I rode this one a lot as a kid. I have strong memories riding it. I know it's a lot of people's favorite ride. So. And in a fitting way to close it out, Molly requested that we sit in the front row. Yeah. Um, not only so that we could get great video footage for posterity, but uh, also she learned that she, was, she said, I didn't realize you could get that wet on Splash Mountain. That's true. To which I said, I'm six okay. foot four, 200 pounds. Uh, we're going to get wet we because went, I'm weighing down the front. We went real fast down. down I got sprayed in the face. Chicken Pin Hill. <laughs> You are very wet. I did, I, I'm shocked. <laughs> Molly's patented water uh, ride system worked again. Again, it can be yours for the price of any hat and a rain jacket. So. I have also been blessed by the Splash Mountain hydraulic filled water. One, one last, last time. time. Pour one out. All right, let's get cozy and then we away. We have asked. We have about 15 minutes till our next lightning lane. So we got a snack and it has come to my attention that Alan's never tried the legendary Adventureland spring rolls before. So here we go. Alan's first spring roll adventure. Ever. Ever. You've never had a spring roll. I don't know which one this is first. How do I? Maybe without the sauce. This is the pastrami. First of all, the exterior of the roll is incredibly crispy and tasty. The pastrami is pretty darn good too, from what I can taste. I'm still trying to work out the cheese sauce on the inside. It's pepper jack. Pepper jack? Yeah, I dig that. I dig that a lot. Good textural contrast. Cheeseburger. What hits you first is the pickle. So you have to like pickles. Again, they nail it on the spring roll itself. Not a question. Not soggy at all, which is a great A crunch. This is heartier than I anticipated. A little bit of mustard, a little bit of ketchup flavor, and ground beef at the back end. These are solid. These are just good snacks. Big fan. After refueling with some delightful spring rolls. Which one did you like better? Cheeseburger. Correct. 
It is it's very tasty. We are on our way to Pirates of the Caribbean. We were able to fiddle faddle a bit and get a lightning lane for a really close time. And we get to go enjoy that wonderful dark ride, boat ride attraction. Dark boat attraction. Dote. Doke. Dote. Bark? Nope, that's not it. In any case, we get to enjoy this wonderful attraction that follows the story of the Pirates of the Caribbean, where you get to witness Jack Sparrow and his shenanigans along with some amazing scenes for this classic attraction. There is no height requirement for this because it is fun for the whole family. Remember when this alcove used to be for Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom? I liked that game. I'm glad the pirate one still exists. The photo for this attraction catches a lot of people off guard, but it is prior to going on the little drop. After you see the skeletons on the beach, there is a pirate skull, and he says, Avast, mateys! Ye be pirates warned, plundering pirates avast! Something like that. I'm but sorry, anyway, is that a direct quote? Mm -hmm. He takes your picture. So, most of the time the pictures are really funny because no one is paying attention except for you if you know where to look. And us, because we will be paying attention. What should our pose be? Uh... Should be like a pirate pose? Like... Like, like, an like, army like if you were Captain of Ass, you'd be like, Arr! If you were Captain of Ass, you'd be leaving the boat because that's what Avast Ass means. Or to stop, you'd be stopping the boat because that's what Avast Ass means. Avast! I, I don't know what Avast means. Should we be we pirates? Pirate like, Arg! Army hearties. Hello, land. Wonderful to see you here. Do we just do like a drunken pirate pose? Do what the Davy Jones moves you. I will do what the Davy Jones moves me. Do what your heart tells you. Yep. See, well, we'll see what that looks like. Next up, foolish mortals, it's time to visit the Haunted Mansion. This is likely the most beloved attraction in all of Disney lore. It's got a ton of merchandise. It's got a ton of backstory, imagineering details, hidden secrets. People love, love, love the Haunted Mansion. And somewhat recently, they added the photo opportunity here. It's actually, your photo's actually taken in the first room when you have the portraits. The last portrait takes your photo. She looks like Medusa. Uh, and then they actually have some very cool digital enhancements on the photos when they show up in your app. How should we pose on the Haunted Mansion? I was thinking I'd, uh, I'd hitchhike with the ghosts. Oh, we join okay. in the fray. They ask us to join the haunts. You're, you're room for a thousand? You're yeah. the, you're the, the next ghost? Listen, I'll join in. I'm um, afraid of that. So <laughs> I'm going to be shocked by the ghosts because they Photoshop in a ghost into the picture. Love it. Okay, let's go. Unlikely sensitive and bright place. Actually, we have 999 in Charles Status update. We have two more rides here in Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is taking forever despite us using lightning lanes everywhere. It's just really busy and it's Saturday. The good news is though, that we have Space Mountain right now okay. because I was able to utilize the power of the Fiddle Faddle. We love the Fiddle Faddle. More good news. Yeah. Tower of Terror is currently down and there's no more lightning lanes for it. Excellent, excellent. What else? Expedition Everest was down basically all day yesterday and most of today. Yeah. It is back up, but it doesn't look like they're offering lightning lane at this point. Oh, fantastic. 75 minute wait, looking forward to that. Hey, love to hear it. What, anything, anything else? Other good news? Uh, other great news, um, Frozen and Test Tracker out of lightning lane. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah, so things are going well. We got this. Up next is Space Mountain, which is a thrilling roller coaster, one of the main mountains here. In Magic Kingdom, you have space, you have Big Thunder, you have Splash, which is, again, going away. Not anymore. 
And I classify Seven Dwarfs Mine Train as a mountain. Do you? Yeah. Everest, too, is like a bonus mountain. Uh, bonus mountain in Animal Kingdom. Space Mountain takes you on a thrilling journey on this indoor coaster through the near pitch darkness. Uh, you get some nice lights and galaxies and constellations in the in the distance. There is a 44 inch height requirement, so keep that in mind before you uh, decide to ride. It is popular, so I do recommend getting a lightning lane for this if you can. Or again, rope drop, get here early and go to this attraction if it's a fan favorite. Or just expect a little bit of a longer queue. Today it actually wasn't very long until about the last two hours or so. And then we saw it pick up from about a 25-30 minute wait to where it is now, which is 60. Now Space Mountain has recently instituted a rule where there is no filming on the attraction for the safety of you, the guest. So any clips that you see from the attraction were taken prior to this rule being put in place. Because cool kids follow the rules. Cool kids follow rules. Yeah. Oh, you heard it here first. We're cool. <laughs> How do you think we should pose for this photo? I'm a fan of like the, the graduation photo, like the senior photo. Yes, yes, you know senior I mean? photo. Like, oh, I'm, I'm so in. Okay, on Space Mountain, they take your picture after you go through that initial tunnel before you go up the main lift. That's when they're gonna take your picture. It's gonna be on the right or left, depending on which track you go on. So if you wanna know for sure, ask the cast members before you get on your rocket ship, which side the camera will be on. Space Mountain check. I do love that ride. It makes me laugh hysterically every time. And now we're headed to our final Magic Kingdom attraction. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. It has a 40 minute wait right now, so I went ahead and snagged the lightning lane. Update, Everest is back open and it does look like they have some lightning lanes available. Huzzah. Update, Tower is back open. Still no lightning lanes available, so Best. it's getting squirrely. We gotta get moving. But for now, it's time to go see my main man, Buzz Lightyear. How should we pose? Normally I look like this, because I'm very serious, like with the gun. So should we make a pose? Do you wanna pose like Buzz flying? Warm up? Oh, sure, sure, I like that. Uh, on this attraction, in the room with Zerg, they're gonna spin your vehicle a certain way, and that's when the photo gets taken. So it's like in the last room. All right, let's go. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin is a family ride, no height requirement, and you are gonna help Buzz Lightyear and the aliens defeat the evil Emperor Zerg, who's trying to steal all the batteries instead of just getting a Costco membership. I love this attraction because there's a lot of rewritability, and if you max out your gun, 999999, you are a galactic hero, which is always my goal. Z marks the spot. Stand by to disengage auto weapon. You've got the six, Space Rangers. Set course for Planet Z. We have completed our defense of the galaxy against the evil Emperor Zerg and are now hauling it, sprinting. Walking quickly because we follow the rules. Cool kids follow the rules. We're definitely not sprinting. We are walking with a purpose out of the Magic Kingdom and making our way, not downtown, but to Animal Kingdom. Magic Kingdom had twice as many rides as any other park, but we still have eight rides to go, three parks in only six hours, including some big heavy hitters. So this is gonna be tight. Okay, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is we are able to fiddle faddle for an Everest in about 25 minutes. So by the time we get there um, and maybe ride Dinosaur first, we'll be able to ride Everest. The bad news is it's starting to rain. And if it starts lightning or thundering, Everest will have to close because of the rain. So will Slinky Dog and Test Track, but we're not worried about those right now. So just waiting for the bus, hope that hurries up, and fingers crossed it doesn't get worse in the weather because then we're really out of luck. We made it to Animal Kingdom and stopped raining. It's a win. So we're headed to Everest. <laughs> Do we have a time for... As much as I want to say yes, maybe after we tap in at Everest, or, or when we get to Epcot. Okay. Call me at Epcot. Joffrey's Shaky Jamaiki is my carrot on a stick right now. We will get to Epcot and also it will the fuel us. Also the feeling of victory. The feeling of victory. Nothing makes me more excited than the feeling of winning. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain. TM, 
takes you through a wild trek up the Forbidden Mountain in the Himalayas where you find, or maybe the Yeti does, find you. While there are no inversions on this coast, you do go backwards for a pretty, uh, a pretty nice portion of the attraction, and that is thrilling enough as you duck, dodge, and weave through the mountain chambers. It has a 44-inch height requirement and is fun for maybe some of the older ones of your family. And I think this is a great representation to some of the more thrilling coasters found in Walt Disney World. I do have an idea for the pose for this one. I also have an idea for the pose for this one. All right, what's yours? First things first, the photo is taken right at the crest of the mountaintop before you head down that 80 foot drop. So most people have hands up screaming, that sort of thing. So my proposition for a pose is to be sleeping. Like go bore someone else with your problems, Yeti. You don't scare us. So like everyone else is like, ah! And then we're just like. I was gonna po pose the exact opposite mm -hmm. pose. <laughs> and have that be us being frightened. However, I do like subverting a narrative. Yeah. Yeah, let's be sleepy. We sleep. so much also i'm really excited because when i did the secrets of animal kingdom video when i talked about everest i really wanted to talk about the fake steam engines because obviously those aren't real steam engines taking you on the roller coaster but there's a steam effect they use at the load area where they make it look like they're steaming and then it wasn't working at the time but then it was just working right now and i got really excited when i noticed it so bonus fun fact they actually pipe it in from the track and then when the train runs over it they then hit it really hard like hitting the nitrous and fast and furious and then the steam comes out of the engine to make it look like it's a steam engine fun it's facts it's all about the family it's all about the family on the way to dinosaur did not book a lightning link for this one however because it's a walk-on right now i think it's a 10 minute wait current state however Molly is still fiddle-faddling away, attempting to find us a lightning lane for Test Track, which said they were out earlier today. Both Frozen and Test Track are out. I already bought Guardians, that's the other one we need there. So what I've done is I booked Soren to kick off the 120 minutes, and now I'm in the Modify feature, just constantly refreshing to see if I can get any time to pop up for Frozen or Test Track. With any luck, one will magically appear during the fiddle-faddle. The magic of the fiddling and faddling. It, it works, but it takes your patient minutes. Not much remains of old Dinoland. In fact, the sort of centerpiece of this location was Primeval Whirl, which currently you cannot even see the bones of said attraction. What? 530 test track. All right, 530 test track. The influencer is showing her enthusiasm with the fiddle faddle. It's time for the second photo attraction in Animal Kingdom. One of my personal faves, Dinosaur. It's fast, it's a blast, it's in the past. <laughs> That's the tagline, I didn't it make, no, I, I, can't, I can't claim that. I'm, glad, look, I'm just happy to hear it out loud. I just really like it. Dinosaur has a 40 inch height requirement, which is lower than a lot of other thrill rides in Disney World, but it will probably terrify your children the most. It's loud, it's dark, there's big animatronic dinosaurs. A lot of people also don't like it because it's a little bit jerky, but I personally love it because I am pro practical sets, moving vehicles and animatronics versus simulators. So I love this one and I'm excited to go see Dr. Grant Seeker. Pose for dinosaur. Speaking of paleontologists, uh -huh. I heard you mention Dr. Grant Seeker. One of my favorites. There is another incredible Dr. Grant. Dr. Dr. Alan, Alan Grant, Grant. Who I think, uh -huh. upon seeing a Carnotaurus, yeah. which is where the photograph is taken. It's true. Would do the epic removal of sunglasses and look upon the creature with awe. Are you suggesting we wear sunglasses on the ride to pose this way? I am indeed suggesting that. Bold but I like it. It's about three o'clock in the morning because I'm basically nocturnal and I'm reviewing this first cut of the video by our fabulous editor and I had to rick -a -rick wipe my eyeballs and rewatch this clip over and over again to confirm that I saw what I thought I saw. Did you see it? 
Yep, that's a child just jumping into the fountain with Aladar the dinosaur. So now it's time for one of my Don't Be a Jerk in the Park PSAs. And as a friendly reminder to all, don't enter a body of water at a theme park unless it is specifically designed to be entered. Wow. I had no idea we caught that on tape until reviewing this. This is just bonkers. Okay, over to you, Dr. Grant Seeger. Hello there. Welcome to our little transdimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeger, your friendly controller and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. If I can bring you back from the Cretaceous period, it stands to reason that I can bring back a live dinosaur with you. And not just any dinosaur. Take a look at this guy. He's an iguanodon. Warning, meteor shower in range. Just little one. <laughs> Dino on the scope. Could be ours. Computer, full stop. Identify. Carnivorous. Definitely not our dino. Go, go, go! Still not our dino, but at least this one's a vegetarian. I love dinosaurs so much. Also, wearing your sunglasses the whole ride makes it really dark, except for the dinosaurs. It makes it's, it kind of scary. It's very... I was just about to say how incredibly dark it was. I liked it. It was neat. Yeah, it was very I cool. I do have some problems that have just sort of hit me about dinosaur right now. Um, the only problem is that people don't respect it enough. Okay, let's talk about, like, actual scientific problems. So... There's no way uh -huh. that Dr. Grant Seeker mm -hmm. in our timeline today mm -hmm. would be able to talk to us in the past. Like I don't, that technology hasn't been invented. If it didn't happen in the Avengers, like I that, don't, the timelines that exist, we've already like, jumped. And if you subscribe to string theory, then that's even already, disturbed a timeline. So that one's now I a think new. we're gonna get addressed in Ant-Man Quantumania. Where does Ken come in? Anyway, there's no way Grant could have talked to us at all. I'm sorry, Dr. Grant, let me put some respect on his name. Anyway, it was fun. I'm getting coffee now. <laughs> I want coffee. Picked up coffee at Dino Bites. We're in and out of Animal Kingdom in less than an hour, which is great, but we still only have four hours to do six rides in two parks. We do Using not Disney transportation. So I'm doing some fast math here, and it's making my stomach have some butterfly feelings. Especially because there's no more lightning lanes for Tower or Frozen, unless, you know, without fiddle paddling. But, uh, oh, we're fiddle family. Obviously. We have to. Obviously, but... <sighs> All right. We have asked. Made it to Epcot, and if I sound winded, it's because we are walking at a rapid pace. But again, walking, not running, because rules, and rules are cool, to test track first. And I, I guess... I'm excited to ride Test Track, but we gotta get there first, tap in, and then hope we can fiddle faddle around to get a lightning lane for Frozen. And the last time that we checked, that attraction was out of lightning lanes for the day. Rolling up to Test Track, presented by Chevrolet TM. Test Track is the attraction that allows you to design your own car and then test it out on the Sim Track. It's not my personal favorite attraction, but if you've got little ones that like cars, they're probably gonna like it. My nephews loved it. It has a 40 inch, four zero inch height requirement, and it's very, very popular, but it does have single rider. So if you're okay with splitting up, that may be your best bet to getting on quickly. Why is the lightning lane so backed up? So there's a little bit of a backup in the test track lightning lane. My, my assumption is that when the weather was a little wonky earlier, that test track probably closed for weather because it does close. Uh, frequently, she's a feisty gal. But if there's lightning in the area, Test Track is definitely closing. And if an attraction closes uh, when you have a lightning lane, you are then issued a pass to either use at another attraction or that attraction when it reopens anytime later. So my assumption is people are coming back, but I hope it doesn't take too long. Also, there's another touch point, which means we can't fiddle faddle for Frozen. You got this timing down pat. Until we, uh, until we touch that other touch point. So I'm just raring to go do you think it's the massive sound and rush of wind as it approaches yeah that's how i know the whole building is shaking as those cars whip around at almost 65 miles an hour so what do you think we should do for a pose well you do know that max loves this oh, attraction. he loves it's, that track. i think it's his favorite attraction out there 
he loves it. He definitely doesn't think Radiator Springs Racers is way better at all. No, not at all. So what we should do is we should give him a thumbs up for friendship. A thumbs up for friendship. That is how we often pose in our, our trio pictures is a thumbs up for friendship. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that for Max. I like it. News update. Guardians down. But on the plus side, we fiddle faddled and I got Frozen Ever After. The other news with that is it's 820, which would cut into our studio's time. We need to be in studios because I've got Slinky Dog that ends at 7. seven. So we need to be going to studios in like 45 minutes. Which is great as we stand in the test track queue. Things are good. Yeah, we, we're doing great. Things are great. I know you're not asking, but, but we're doing great. So good. <laughs> Test track, just in time for Guardians to come back up. We were on an emotional roller coaster today. And now we're gonna be on a literal roller coaster, but we're headed there now quickly <laughs> in hopes that the lightning lane's not too backed up with people all trying to go ride it from the downtime. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is the newest attraction here in Epcot. It has some incredible ride technology as it takes you through time to help save the galaxy, really. It has a 42 inch height requirement. It is a very intense coaster experience, but it is perhaps one of the most fun coasters that exists today in Walt Disney World, in my opinion. Slight back up in the lightning lane, but typically they will prioritize the lightning lane, especially if there was a downtime since people paid for it. There's only two ways to ride this attraction right now. There's no standby queue. You either have to purchase it as a fancy ride, which is what we did, or you can do the virtual queue. To join the virtual queue, you need to have an Epcot reservation. You can join it at 7 a.m. from anywhere or be inside the park at 1 p.m. So the virtual queue is the free way to do it. You do get to see the full extended queue. However, you don't know what time you're gonna get called back. And since we weren't starting at Epcot today, it didn't make sense with our plans. If you wanna know more information about virtual queue and Genie Plus, we've done tons of Genie videos that we can link for you to help you out with that information. One tip I will say with the virtual queue is that if you are trying to book virtual queue, as well as Genie Plus, as well as fancy rides, your order of operation first thing in the morning should be virtual queue number one, then your Genie Plus attraction, and then your fancy ride, or have multiple people in your group all trying to book things at 7 a.m. Just make sure everybody's linked up in advance of that 7 a.m. start time. Okay, so how should we pose? I think we should pose like our favorite Avenger. All right. Yeah, the I like it. The photo's a few seconds after the backwards launch, so get ready. Have it queued up. I gotta think about who I'm gonna do. I got it. We are likely doomed. Rex! Good luck! You did it. just an excellent attraction. I love that ride so much. Now, if an attraction you want to do, especially one that you had a Lightning Lane for, goes down, when it comes back up, either get there very quickly or wait a little while. We were luckily right across the way at Test Track and we're able to jump in the Lightning Lane very quick so we didn't wait too long. But as we exited, the Lightning Lane is going like around the spaceship now because everybody's running back to ride it. So give it a little time and uh, let that Lightning Lane cool down if you can't get there really quickly. Now on to our photos. Who are you? I was uh, T'Challa. I'm wearing a Black Panther sweatshirt today. He's one of my favorites, so I went for the Wakanda forever. That feels on brand. I was Iron Man, because Tony Stark Iron Man is my favorite. That's that's true. He's a good one. <laughs> yes, right. If you want to know where the photo is, it's about five seconds after the backwards launch. Uh, there's kind of starry flashes. That's the photo. So I did a little bit of fiddling and faddling and was able to find a lightning lane for Frozen Ever after 15 minutes from that point, which means that we are due on that attraction right now. So we're en route. 
Frozen Ever After is a family-friendly boat ride here in the Norway Pavilion. It replaced Maelstrom a few years ago at this point. I personally really like this attraction. I think the animatronics are great, particularly Olaf and Sven. I think the Frozen music is great. I don't care who you are. The song Let It Go slaps. And it always has a long line because it's so popular and because that IP is so popular. So it's definitely a good one to use Genie Plus on if you're getting it for your Epcot day. All right, on Frozen, it's kind of like Pirates that not a lot of people realize there's a photo, but it's when you go down the little waterfall after the big snowman uh, yells at you and you go down, that's when it takes your picture. So how do we pose on Frozen? Pick your favorite Frozen character. Okay. You'll just have to wait and see mine. Is this Elsa or Scarlet Witch? I'm getting both. You're serving me both. But also neither. <laughs> Somehow neither, yes, that is correct. All right, well, we'll see how it looks at the end here. <laughs> We are on our way out of Epcot. We are we're dashing. We're not running. No. Dashing no running. is a dashing is a power walk. Dashing is a state of mind. Yeah. <laughs> a state of mind. A state of mind when you've T minus two hours to get to another park and ride three of the most popular attractions there. Seems feasible and reasonable. The fiddling and faddling has worked for us thus far, so what's the I'm nervous. I'm going to just feign confidence. What's to say we can't do it now? We are cutting it very close to make it on time for our Slinky Dog Dash. Good news, though. Whilst in the queue for Frozen Ever After, I was able to fiddle faddle for a soon Tower of Terror. Which is good news. Now, we have received a notification on the My Disney Experience application that due to some inclement weather, the ferry boats and Skyliner might experience downtime. So we are going to avoid those forms of transportation and instead we are going to head to the front of the park and order a minivan to scoot ourselves over to Hollywood Studios in style. Who doesn't love a polka dot pattern? I reserved our minivan as we were walking to the front of the park. Now to reserve a minivan, you are going to use the Lyft app, just the same app you would use anywhere, except for when you're on Disney property, when it comes to the types of vehicles available, a minivan should pop up along with like regular Lyft, extra large Lyft, etc. Minivans are basically just Lyfts that only drive around Disney property and they are quite expensive compared to regular rideshare. The minivan was quoted about $38 for us to go between Epcot and Hollywood Studios, about three times the cost of a regular lift also in the app. But there's a few reasons I occasionally feel like using a minivan is worth it. For starters, minivans tend to drop you off closer and pick you up closer than a regular rideshare would. That's especially true at Magic Kingdom where minivans can drop you and pick you up where the buses are, not at the transportation and ticket center. So we're on a time crunch. If you're on a time crunch, that's something to consider. Additionally, minivans can usually sit more people. They are typically literally minivans or some kind of SUV. Minivans also come equipped with car seats and cast members who have been trained to put in and take out those car seats. I've never traveled with a car seat, but from my understanding, those are not guaranteed in regular rideshare. So if you're traveling with little ones, that is important information as well. Again, minivans are expensive. However, if you are looking to go park to park quickly, or if you're looking to go from resort to resort quickly, they're sometimes a good option. One tip I will give you about rideshare in general in the theme parks is that, especially at night, Animal Kingdom just closed. So I was quoted 17 minutes for a minivan to pick up. Uh, I have found that using any kind of rideshare at the end of the night, especially from Epcot where people are often consuming alcohol can be quite long. So you may want to schedule a pickup or just be prepared for longer waits for your rides. We made it to Hollywood Studios. We are dashing this way. Less than 90 minutes for those three rides. Alan, did you enjoy the minivan? I did. It was my first minivan experience. It was very nice. A lot more 
luxurious that I anticipated, if I'm being honest. Other perks of minivans are they do have chargers in there. All the cars are clean. We're talking to our driver. She said all the standard vehicles can hold six guests. And then they also have some uh, accessible vehicles as well. We made it into Hollywood Studios. We're headed first to Toy Story Land. We're a little late for our Slinky Dog Dash Lightning Lane. However, we're gonna ask very nicely if we might possibly enjoy it. There's typically on the rides, not the shows, but on the rides, typically there's a little bit of a grace period on the back end where if you're a few minutes late because you were at a dining reservation or another ride was delayed or something, they'll let you in. There's not a set rule and it is often up to the cast member's discretion. So if you are running late, you know, always ask. Be very, very polite to the cast members, but it's definitely not a guarantee. If we do not get on Slinky Dog right now, I think we'll jet down Sunset, use our Tower of Terror lightning lane, try to get one for Rock and Roller Coaster and then end at Slinky Dog. Maybe, is my thought. We are headed into Toy Story Land to Slink, to Dog, to Dash, on Slinky Dog Dash. It is a great introductory roller coaster with a 38 inch height requirement, so it's fun for most of your family. And it, uh, for me, hits a real nice nostalgic note because it has that build your own racetrack feel with two launch points, and I, uh, I adore it. I also really like how they seamlessly build in the IP representation of Toy Story with all of the great childhood toys around the track itself. Slinky Dog Dash is the ride that Molly booked at 7 a.m. because it is one of the more popular attractions that are non-fancy rides that require booking early. So at 7 o'clock this morning, Molly booked Slinky Dog Dash and here we are at this time of night hoping to hop on. Slinky Dog takes your picture as you go around the loop-de-loop -loop towards the end. What are we going to do? We can't do favorite Toy Story character because we already did Buzz when we were on Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger split. Favorite toy. Like favorite childhood toy? Yes. The okay. idea is forming as we go. Favorite childhood toy. Favorite childhood toy. How to be a Barbie. Cast members at Slinky Dog Dash were kind enough to honor our lightning lane and let us in even though we were late. Again, in instances where you are late to a lightning lane, just be kind to those cast members and hope they're able to make a little bit of magic for you. They were for us, so it might be the same for and, you. And and by a little late, we don't mean like multiple hours late. Right. Don't show up right. like six hours later and be like, whoops, because like <laughs> Oopsie you know. Daisy. But if you're, you know, a little bit late. As always, be nice to cast members, they're the best. Yes, be nice to cast members. That said, much like we did on the attraction, we are also going to slink and dash. And dog. Yep, right on over to Tower of Terror because uh, we need to tap in there to utilize and redeem our lightning lane. And then folks, keep your fingers crossed because we are going to race against time to get to Rock and Roller Coaster and nab those backstage passes. I hope we get them. Yeah, that gets... I always get antsy, oh, right? Like yeah. it's it's such a big thing to expect. I know it's it's a little it's a little gluttonous. I mean, they are Aerosmith. Yeah, they recorded the music on the hit film Armageddon. Okay. Working our way down Sunset Boulevard. Very glad we were able to fiddle faddle for a Tower of Terror Lightning Lane because it still has an 85 minute wait. Our plan, had we not been able to do that, was going to jump in the tower queue last. As a friendly reminder, you can jump in a queue as late as the park is open. Even if it has an 85-minute wait, you can jump in a queue five minutes before the park closes, and then you're spending that 85 minutes not wasting park time. Every time I see the Tower of Terror all lit up at night, I just want to go party at the Tip Top Club, don't you? Is this well before lightning strikes, or is this just before lightning strikes? Because if it's well before lightning strikes and they're able to go yeah. home at a reasonable hour and not be at risk of, you know, a lightning strike, I'm really into it. I just feel like they'd have good cocktails and music, you know? 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Probably charcuterie board. Probably just that one night too, because again, the lightning strike. <laughs> also, the more I look at the tower, you can see people in all the hotel rooms. The last time we figured that out, there was like a man just watching us, but now I'm seeing couples. Do you think they know about the lightning strike? I think they're busy. Tower of Terror is a fan favorite. It has a 44-0 inch height requirement, and it is the attraction that takes you to the Twilight Zone via haunted elevator. What I love about Tower of Terror is that you never know what's gonna happen because the drop sequence is randomized. So you don't know if you're gonna go up first, down first. Every ride gets a full 13 story, 199 foot drop, and they actually drop you faster than the speed of gravity because they're pulling you down, not just having you drop, but this attraction's a fan fave and I'm excited to ride it right now. Now, the photo for Tower of Terror is taken when you are on the top, the door is open, it shows you how high up you are, and then you drop. That's when your photo's taken. What should we go with here? Let's be fancy. 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 Like, I'm gonna do my best Barney Stinson. Okay, so like a pinky up situation, like an adjust the time, maybe a monocle. Got it. Yep. Got it. This time, it's opening for you. A thrilling ride through the Twilight Zone here in the Hollywood Tower Hotel. <sighs> we were not able to grab a lightning lane for Rock and Roller Coaster, however, which means we're going to go hop in line and hope, beyond hopes, that the current wait time of 60 minutes is longer. A liar. A liar. A liar. We hope it's a liar. We don't condone dishonesty often here at Mammoth Club, but we do if it's about a wait time that's overinflated. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't even say that's condoning dishonesty. I think this is, we are hoping for... Dishonesty. Dishonesty. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm being lied to. Mm-hmm. That's a very rare occurrence. Mm-hmm. Just as note, you can't book any lightning lanes past 30 minutes prior to the park close. So while you can get a lightning lane for like 8.30 to 9, for example, you can't keep booking them or modifying them after that 30 minute mark. Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith is a high speed coaster. So as such, it has a 48 inch height requirement. It does go zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds. And uh, you are on a super, super stretch limo going very, very quickly to the concert you have received with the backstage passes from the band Aerosmith. We were lied to. Yes. I'm so happy to have experienced the deceit. It's basically a walk on. And I'm thrilled about that. Wow. Uh, mm, dishonesty never felt so good. <sighs> smells like victory in a timely and efficient fashion. How are we going to pose? Ooh, I'm going to do my best Eddie Munson. I was going to say an Eddie Munson tribute. Yeah. Eddie Munson tribute. All those Stranger Things fans out there, this is for Eddie Munson. Pour one out. Forever in our hearts and in reality your body is left in the upside down and we're just not going to talk about that but this is for you roller coaster is right when you take off and you know what i think we did eddie munson proud i agree and i was thinking while i was on the attraction for a while that eddie munson story really mirrors that of Cass from D, &D. Mm -hmm. so Cass was a lieutenant of vecna who in dungeons and dragons was a arch lich now vecna and stranger sure things looks like one 
And I know people are like, we're going to be cast in D&D. You'd have to be an undead servant in the form of Van Vecna. So Eddie's now dead. Sorry, if you haven't seen it, what do you So Eddie's perished inside place that we know Vecna rules. Similar to the Shadowfell where Vecna lives in that deep lore. But there's a lot of parallels. So what I'm thinking, Vecna, Stranger Things Vecna, is a mirror story. And then what ultimately happens is Vecna and helps overthrow him. I hope that happens. Nerd time. Well, we did it. All 14 on-ride photos captured in one day. And I think it's worth noting that we did not use the standby line anywhere except for Rock and Roller Coaster, which was a walk-on. So Genie Plus may have its faults, but it helped us get on 13 of the most popular rides in Walt Disney World today. What was your favorite on-ride photo today? I liked Mansion. It's just like I have kind of a scary eye look thing going on, mm -hmm. and second to that is Rock and Roller Coaster. I gotta say, Splash. I never thought Splash would be my favorite of anything, but I thought our, I thought our salute goodbye to Splash was a very funny on-ride photo, and I will cherish it, especially knowing I never have to ride Splash Mountain again. Quick pro tip, though, for everybody. We actually, just a little bit of behind the scenes, were a little worried because three of the rides that we had went on, which were Seven Doors Mine Train, Pirates of the Caribbean, and uh, Frozen Ever After, did not appear in our photo gallery on our My Disney Experience app. So we were talking to a photographer on Sunset who took our We Did It photo, and he said we can actually go to the front of the park. There's a photo pass stop at every park in the front, and they have access to all of the pictures from all of the parks for several weeks going back. So if you can remember what time you took the photo, obviously what you were wearing, maybe what character you were with or what ride you were on, they can go through every picture and add it to your magic band. So thank you to Edward on Sunset Boulevard who told us that. And thank you to Cuneo inside um, here at Hollywood Studios. It's up at the front at Sid Coenga's. Um, and he looked through the pictures. We had the timestamps from filming the videos. We were able to locate them and get them on our magic band. And now we've got all of our pictures. So little pro tip, if something's missing, head to the photo pass center at the front of any park and they can help you out. Thank you to both of you and uh, Edward, roll tide. Let us know which of the on-ride photos you like the most in the comments down below. In the meantime, be sure to like and subscribe if you're new and ring that notification bell and follow us on all of our socials. <laughs> and until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been magical. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. I'm so hungry. I'm hungry and I want a cocktail. Ooh. We have asked.